Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on ClueCon Weekly. Today, we are joined by one of the core members of the Free Switch team, Michael Jarris. Hi, how are you doing? Doing all right. Good morning. Before we start, I have two announcements. The first announcement is that ClueCon is over, which is sad, but happy because we all had such a great time. We saw so many great presentations. It was a lot of fun, and we could not have asked for a better 15th anniversary. And our second announcement is announcement inception, announcementception, because during ClueCon, Anthony Minasali, during his keynote, announced that the new free switch release is out, which we're also excited about. I'll ask Jaris a little bit more about this in a second, but I'm pretty sure it was done a year earlier than any of us had anticipated, and uh, that is version 1.10.0. So, Michael Jaris, would you like to tell us a little bit more about this exciting news? Um, sure. Uh, 1.10.0, um, it's uh, been a lot of work. Uh, we spent a lot of time focusing on a new unit test framework and a bunch of code stabilizing things. There are hundreds and hundreds of bug fixes, not a lot of big new features, but uh, the overall work towards stabilization has been a huge effort. Um, the few things of particular note that we added is we added packaging for Raspberry Pi and packaging support for Debian Buster. Um, the CentOS packages are uh, back around. We created some new repos for those. Um, we did, added a process manager inside of Mod V8, so you can uh, run JavaScript scripts in the background and kill them and things like that. That's been something we've wanted to do for a really long time, so that's in there now. And the other thing we did was we moved uh, to a new interface for database modules, um, and that's... Uh, because of that, we moved Postgres out of the core into a new module, but we also finally added a MariaDB module, which people have been asking for for years. So um, lot, lots of little bits, uh, so some definite good features that have been long waited, um, and a significant, significant amount of energy into uh, stabilizing things and new platform support. So. Um, Hopefully, uh, everyone loves the new release. Uh, so if uh, people wanted to find more information about this, are, are there places that they could go to learn more about the new release? I know for sure there's the Slack channel if you have any questions about you know, how it works. If you go to signalwire.community, we have a whole free switch Slack channel where, where our community hangs out. Uh, is there anywhere else? Yep. If uh, you go to our wiki at freeswitch.org slash confluence, uh, in the left bar, there is a release notes section. Um, you can select that, and you can go and look right at the 110 uh, release notes. And I, I guess we can put a link to this in the video as well. Oh, yes. Good idea. Click on I the link. That to you. <laughs> That's a great idea. We're going to do that. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I had another question. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I remember Anthony Minasali, he talked about how last year, he said in his keynote that this release would be done in two years, but it's only been one year. So, can you tell a little, tell us a little bit about why why it's quicker this year? Because that's definitely um, for everybody, I think. Yeah, I, I mean the the backstory is we've been very busy with uh, trying to make SignalWire, but the upside of that is we've also been able to hire a bunch of people uh, that work on FreeSwitch. So. Um, a, a good deal of my time that used to be dedicated almost completely to build maintenance and things like that. Um, all of that uh, has been shifted over to uh, a signal employer, Andre. And uh, he's, because he can focus on those things, is, you know, instead of just maintaining things, has added Buster support, added Raspberry Pi, done a bunch of dockerization of our builds. Um, just overall made everything work better. Automated testing, we get real-time alerts when a build uh, has a new regression in our testing. Um, just an overall uh, much more solid, useful system to us. So um, 
the the main reason is uh, we have the resources. Um, we're we're hiring more people to work on this, and we have the resources to get things out there. Well, that's great. I know you know when you start a project, it's so small. It's just three guys, but then it it grows and grows into this whole thing, and it's still the same three guys. And you're like, ah, yeah. <laughs> nobody it's, has enough time. <laughs> so it's definitely a, a different world than the first day where me, uh, Tony, and Brian were just uh, you know sitting in an audio only conference bridge the days before video. Um, you know. And on a, an SSH screen, you know, looking at a fresh set of code. But uh, uh, it's it's a good new world. Yeah, it's pos positive change. Things are things are smoother. <laughs> and I guess if you want to meet those well, those guys that you were talking about, uh, they they hang out on the uh, on the SignalWire dot community. That's our our Slack channel that you guys can go meet them. Because I know we're a very tight knit community, and so if you want to go say hi to them, they hang out in there. <laughs> you give really? them love a shout out. <laughs> so I guess my next question, of course, if you're going to talk to me, I'm going to bring it up. Is how was oh. KubeCon this year? Everyone oh, knows how I feel about KubeCon, but how do you feel? About yeah, but you're biased, right? Um, I love this. Uh, yeah, KubeCon. Uh, KubeCon was amazing this year. The entire event um, ran the smoothest I've ever seen. There was more bodies in the room than uh, I've ever seen through every aspect of uh, KubeCon from the beginning of the coder games through to the end, you know, literally the last minutes of the event, the room was full. Um, which I've never seen. Everyone always like someone gets a late uh, early flight. They have to leave. Right. The room was full to the absolute end. I don't know how you guys pull this off, but uh, it might have something to do with giving away a laptop at, right at the end. Um, <laughs> <It> really helps. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, you know, there was lots of interesting speeches. I enjoyed them. There was some great announcements. Um, Research release. We announced uh, the uh, SignalWire um, funding as well. Which is um, great, by the way. Yeah, which is great news for us. Um, uh, other than it means that we all have an incredible amount of work to do for the next uh, several years. Um, good and bad news. Yeah, yeah. The the good news is Less free the, time. the bad news is the work. Um, so, no, it's going to be great. Uh, super excited about uh, growing this uh, uh, amazing uh, thing that we're creating. So, yeah. uh, on ClueCon, the thing that I was most impressed with, and I don't even know why it impresses me, and you're going to appreciate this, oh, good. Uh, is in the Maker uh, games, your, <laughs> your free cycle thing attracts, <laughs> it, like, I never anticipate how many people are going to be engaged in it. And it is so engaging for people who maybe aren't coders, but have that kind of creative energy and want to build things. Um, and there's some amazing things people make. There was uh, the crossbow was the, uh, the bit that I thought was <laughs> most amazing. Yeah, it was a little scary, but uh, it like it really worked. Yeah, you like he um, like shot like a, a like a dart that he made at the wall. Yeah, it was like made out yeah. of like wood, like little dowel, and it shattered when it hit the wall. Seriously, that <laughs> like, please hotel, pay no notice to the large dent in the wall. That was yeah. definitely there before we got here. Yeah, James <laughs> really tried to make an actual blow dart. He asked me to go needles and so I did and he tried to make like a whole blow dart like with the needle and everything yeah. yes because what could go wrong James <laughs> and I we did not rehearse this beforehand so thank you Jaris for your kind words I thought thank it was you. a lot of fun yeah, it's one of those things where you hear about it and you go well that sounds pretty fun but kind of silly but like that's why when you get there and you're like that looks like fun no it was Truly amazing, and I love engaging um, people's creativity from all different skill sets. Um, and 
you know, really getting them into the spirit of creating things. Cause that's, yeah. I mean, that's what I enjoy the most about this work, making things. Right. And a lot of people like are passionate about, you know, their jobs and coding, but I always hear like, this is my day off. I'm not trying to work. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. I'm like, I guess I can't argue with that. <laughs> cool. So I'm glad you had fun. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully if you attended, you had fun as well and learned a lot. I know I did. I learned a lot. So keep an eye out for next year. But I promise you won't have to hear any more announcements about that for a couple more months. So don't worry. <laughs> We're, we're going to take a whole month off before we start. A whole month. Don't <laughs> worry. Cool. So my next two questions that I have, I took from the same Slack channel I was kind of talking about earlier because we've got a SignalWire Slack channel and a Free Switch Slack channel and a KluCon Slack channel, but, you know, it's not for another year. So you can go in. A lot of people ask questions. There's especially with the free switch since it's still open source, uh, the community is really strong in there. And we also have built up a signal wire community as well, where we offer some of our support team goes in there and offers uh, some limited support and our community members answer questions. So here are a few questions we're gonna answer live on the air. We're not live, but whatever. <laughs> so the first question says, hi. How do I set up a dial plan to connect a call to an existing session? Good question. Awesome. Um, so, uh, and again, look in the notes for a link. Um, we have a dial plan application called Intercept. And Intercept takes uh, an argument of the UUID of the other session that you want to steal. Um, so it's pretty straightforward to use. The gotcha is how do you get how do you find out the other thing you want to steal? And there are some examples in the default configs um, that allow you to steal an active call for another session that use the hash app to store the UUIDs um, against the extension, so you have a way to find them. Um, so there's some basic examples in Tree and also on that intercept page that uh, we'll link in the notes. Uh, there's some more examples there as well. <laughs> Great. So question number two is a little longer, so buckle up. Okay. Is there an ESL API command that will cause FreeSwitch to originate a call to either an international or external extension and make a recording of what is said into that call? Also, can one specify the name of the recording from the ESL API command? Is there a way to determine when the call is complete from the ESL? So let's talk about ESL. Multiple questions. All right. So, but that's okay. <laughs> so multiple parts. Uh, yes, there is absolutely a uh, way to record a call and to create a call from ESL. Um, to create a call from ESL, you're going to use the originate command. Um, it sounded like they already knew that piece. Um, you just need dial plan set up to originate wherever you need to originate to. That should be pretty straightforward. Um, the second part of this question is to record it and how to specify the file name. So again, link in the notes. Um, there's an application called Record Session. Um, and Record Session is an app that uh, you kind of run before your bridge or during your bridge that um, will record and mux both sides of the calls into one recording. Uh, you specify the file name to the Record Session. Um, the trick here is we want to uh, start recording when. Do we want to start recording as soon as we hear ringing or do we want to start recording when the call is answered? Um, so we're going to use uh, execute on media or execute on answer, um, which is a channel variable. Um, and you set the value to record session, space, and then the file name. Um, you can do that 
on originate, you can do it right in the dial string. Uh, you can do it in the curly braces in front of the dial string um, and put that var in there and it kind of sews all the pieces together. Uh, and is there, the last quite part of the question was, is there a way to tell from ESL that the recording stopped? Um, yes, there is, but if you're recording session, uh, all that's gonna tell you, uh, all you need to know is when the call ends, because the recording is going to keep going until the call ends. But there is a record stop uh, event. If you're looking for these kinds of events, you can uh, just set this up on a test box, turn on all the events, uh, and uh, go through your scenarios and see what events are there. But uh, in this scenario, you're probably not looking for a record stop event. You're probably looking for the hangout event. Uh, I believe there's both. I'm not sure. Not a hundred percent sure on record session if there's a stop event. It may just depend on the hangout. Well, thank you for answering those questions. Not um, a problem. That's the only thing I have planned to ask you today. So if you have any closing thoughts, speak now or forever hold your peace till the any next. Closing <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a few click on weekly since I've been on. I used to do this every week. Uh, I kind of miss it. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah, maybe not every week, but maybe every other. Um, I think the people want that. Yeah. On, uh, I'm free switching the community. Um, one dot tens out. Um, we really need your feedback. Let us know what we did right, what we did not so right. Um, software gets better from your feedback. So uh, got a couple fixes in. Uh, we're probably going to drop another little minor release soon for everybody um, just to uh, catch a couple things. We definitely need a lot of help testing running free switch on Buster. Um, we did a huge push to get all the build stuff in there and working right for 110, but we have not really spent a lot of time testing it. So um from the community we really need your support to start beating up on buster tell us what works tell us what doesn't work uh let's get that to be rock solid um because it looks like it's going to be a much better platform than stretch we just need to prove it that's what i got awesome great show everybody thank you for joining us michael juris i'm going to coerce you to come back since you like it so much and awesome. Catch us back here next week, every Wednesday, for our next episode of KuCon Weekly. And uh, see you guys in the Slack channel. <laughs>